Hey everybody, in this video we're going to take a look at a feature that a lot of students ask me about, which is Bomberman bombs exploding in uh, various directions until they hit a wall. So the expanding explosion. Uh, the way I'm going to show you here is going to be a very simple way. Uh, then there's another follow-up video or two that actually talk about a way that's even better that give you more options in your game. But here we go for the simple version. I've already coded the person walking away and dropping bombs down with the space bar. Let's go look at how to make these explosions happen with a little object here just called Fire, one of the default uh, Game Maker graphics. So here we go. The player drops a bomb, and when a bomb is dropped, I turn an alarm on for 90 steps. So in three seconds, this thing is going to blow up. So let's go to the alarm. Event, add alarm zero. Now what I want to do here is I basically want to do something in all four directions. I want to make the bomb explode, but go outwards. So if you're not familiar with Bomberman bombs, just go Google it on or YouTube it right now and check it out. What I have to do is I have to be able to check the squares beside me by 32 pixels because I've made all my pixels 32 by 32 in this program. I'll just show you that quickly. So all my sprites are like the bomb have been set to a collision mask a full image. So all 32 by 32 and my entire grid in this game is 32 by 32 as you can see here in the room. So if I can keep checking 32 to the side of me, 32 to the side of me, sorry, 32 to the side of me, 64 to the side of me, whatever 64 plus 32 is to the side of me, if it's free of a wall, then it's okay to make a bomb there, but I don't want to make too many bombs, right? I just want to make, let's say, three or four. So let's go back to the bomb and get this to happen. So in the bomb alarm, when it explodes, I'm just going to do one direction here, just to the right, okay? The right word, fire. So here I go. Now, what I want to do is I want to keep doing this until I hit a wall. <clears throat> okay, to a maximum of four pieces. So here's a very uh, sort of simple way to do it. I could say if not place meeting. Now, I know my bomb sprite is actually the same size as my fire sprite, which is convenient here. So I'm just going to ask, could I put this bomb 32 pixels over to the side, and would it be hitting a block? Okay. So if I wouldn't be hitting a block, I can make a fire piece. So let's go instance create, X plus 32, Y, O, fire. Okay. So that's the first fire piece. Now if I could successfully make the first fire piece, I can go on and I can ask another question. Let's see if I can get the next one. So if not place meeting x plus 64, y comma o block, I can make another fire piece. Now this procedure can go on and on and on as far as you want. Now the nice thing is, is it only keeps going if it was successful in making the fire piece it was on, right? And so now I can do it again, and I can do it again. But let's just test this one out here. So this should possibly make two. So if not meet, if it's free, 32 pixels over, make one. And then ask, hey, is it free 64 pixels over? If so, make one. And you could keep tucking these ifs in as long as you want. Now I'm going to show you a better way, right, using a loop. But this is sort of the basic logic of it, right? So let's give this a little go here and see if I get at least two fire pieces to the right of me. So there's one there, let's do one there. So it looks like it's only making it up to the wall, which is good. And when it has room, it goes all the way. And when it has no room, it doesn't make any. Uh-oh, I forgot a key line here. I'm not destroying my bomb. So let me just uh, add that in there, right? That was a little oops. So when the alarm goes off, do all that, and instance destroy the bomb. Okay, so that'll take care of the bomb actually destroying itself afterwards. Now, if this procedure can work for as many as you want in the rightward direction, you could go left, just change these to negatives, or you could go up, keep the y's, x is the same, and make the y's go positive 32 or negative 32, depending what direction you want. So it's a bit of copy-pasting there, right? So this method isn't 
too bad for a beginner, right? At least you can sort of get it, and it works, and it gets your game moving forward. But let's look at something a little better. Let's improve this by using a loop. So here we go. So those of you that haven't done loops yet, you should learn loops. They're pretty key. So there's my little loop counter. I'm going to say start k at 0. I'm going to say let's go for up to 5 fire pieces. k equals k plus 1. So we go up by once. Now here's a nice little trick. This is going to be the loop to make them go to the right. And so let's just do a little check here. Let's say if not place meeting x plus. Now I'm going to change this a little. So I'm going to go back here a second. This would be asking if I'm 32 pixels free. If I am, then I want to make a fire piece. So instance, create x plus 32, y, o, fire. But if this loop keeps repeating, and this loop goes 0, 1, let's actually just make this a 1 there. There we go. If it goes from 1 to 5, then what's going to happen is this is going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, but it's always checking 32 pixels over. What I need is I need this to go 32, 64, I don't even know what 32 and 64 is because it's uh, early, 96, etc., etc. Now, the way to do this, and this is a very common thing with for loops and math patterns that are very simple like that, is just to do this times by k there and times by k there. And so if you see the pattern here, when k is 1, this is going to be checking x plus 32 times 1, so 32 over, and then it makes it 32 over. The next time it runs the loop, it's going to make it k equals 2. So 32 times 2, which is 64, and 64, and then 96. And you can see the pattern here is very repetitive, right? And it goes all the way up to, in this case, 5. Easy to change that variable, right? Make it as long as you want. But this little multiplier here takes care of it growing. Now, this way isn't bad. And if I run it, we're going to have to add one extra thing, but I will run it now just to show you what's going to not work out. This will definitely make our five fires. Okay, but so I'll test it there. And looks good. Makes the five fires. Now I'll test it here. And it stops at the wall. That's good. But check this out. There's going to be little problems in certain parts. Check this one out. Through the wall. Right, it went k equals 1, k equals 2. 3? No, don't make it there. But then the loop kept checking and it went to 4. And 4 was free, right? 4 times 32 is free. It made one there. We need a way for this loop to say, hey, as soon as you hit a wall, get out of this loop. And that command is a really fast, simple one, which basically finishes this one off here. And it's just inside the loop. I just have to add an else. So you have to remember here that if statement was asking if I'm not meeting a wall, make a fire piece. Otherwise, get out of this loop. And to get out of the loop, I don't know if you need the semicolon or not, you just put break. And by putting break, it breaks out of the innermost loop you're in. And this is the only loop we're in is this for loop. So I break out and I continue here. And what you could do down here is you could write another for loop for all the left fires, the up fires, the down fires, etc. So that's a little copy pasting. Now, for those that want to stick around for another two minutes, I mean, this will work. But if you're good with your math, cosines and sines, I'm going to show you a way right here, which might go over some of your heads. But it's a way to do this all uh, without having to copy paste this four times. Okay. So that's basically it for the video. So I'll say thanks for watching. Now, if you're sticking around, check this out. Variable angle. I'm going to write another for loop here. So let me just do this. And my other for loop, basically, I want to start my angle at 0. <coughs> and I want to go while the angle is less than or equal to 270. And I want the angle to go up by 90s. Here, I'll just write this a long way for you. Plus 90. I want the angles to go up by 90s. So my angle loop here is going to go 0. 90, 180, 270. And now here's the nice thing if you have any experience with math and angles and a little bit of programming is there's a nice pattern. Depending what direction you're doing, you're either going minus 32, plus 32, 
or maybe on the y variable you're doing the y's you're going minus 32 or plus 32 if there was only a way to get a pattern here right if there was only a way to get a pattern with the 32's that was related to the angle and there is it's sine and cosine now I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail here on the sine and cosine but if you do know your sine and cosines you can just do something like this I can say x plus 32 times k times and since I'm doing the x direction that's related to cos and let me just make this bigger that's related to cos and I can go degrees to radians because game maker needs radians for its angles and I'll say angle and that's really it I'll just copy this part here for the y direction whoops there we go so it has to be cos now this works nicely because let's say you have zero degrees facing right the cosine of zero is one one times 32 times k that's perfect it's going to get you whatever value you're supposed to get um, and for the y's you can probably guess here it's going to be y and y's are reversed in game maker right like you go up you're minusing your y's so you actually got to flip this this is a minus 32 times k times sot degrees to radians angle um, and that's really that one there and I'm just gonna copy and paste that copy pasting is always just dangerous right y minus 32 times sine and one more there there we go and this little trick now does all four directions so let's say I take a direction like downwards right I want to go down we know the result of this should be the y's getting bigger so let's give it a go the cosine of 270 is 0 0 times this will be 0 so we just have variable x so we're not moving left or right but when you go to do the sine the sine of 270 is negative 1 negative 1 times negative 32 is 32 times whatever k we're on it's going to be a positive something, positive 32, positive 64, positive 96. So it's building up. This is a very clever way. I've obviously missed a bracket here. Oh, I said, oh, fire, oh, block. What have I missed bracket-wise? Degrees to radians, angle, angle, right there. There we go. And now this should do it. All in one nice thing, all four directions. Let's give it a go. Oh no, I'm going to go fix this. I'm missing a bracket, line 25. I know exactly where that was. This for loop I started up here, I never finished it. That's ending the angle loop. Okay, let's give it a go. And that'll end this video with maybe a little bit of a math lesson and a very nice short routine for a good task. And of course, using the for loops makes it very easy. You can basically set this to any variables you want to set it to and have as many bombs as you want. That's why I like this method a little better, right? Now, in the next video, what I do is I do this fire effect, but instead of the fires all popping up at one time, I have them delayed in a chain, so they sort of go outwards going boom, 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 like a little explosion chain. So check that one out if you think that might be something you're interested in. Thanks for watching.